G'day internet peeps and welcome back to another clock bench video. Up on the bench today we've got the Core 2 Duo E8600 processor which is a uh, 3.3 gigahertz stock speed socket 775 and it's a 65 watt Wolfdale CPU. The E8600 was released in 2008 which makes this processor almost nine years old but uh, these uh, Core 2 Duos for me they're like the gift that just keeps on giving they run cool they all pretty much overclock like the clackers and even running it, um, the game you see the Witcher 3 um, it's running an older graphics card which is a 6950 that's unlocked but uh, it's it's definitely the bottleneck the only reason the CPU was at 100% is because I'm recording. The motherboard of choice today is the notorious EP45T UD3R sporting the F6 BIOS. Now this particular motherboard supports DDR3 which is a huge plus for a Core 2 because we can load the RAM up up to a maximum of 16 gigabytes. Now on the Gigabyte website they say that this motherboard natively supports dual channel DDR3 2200 MHz for remarkable system performance. But 2200 MHz on a Core 2 Duo, yeah, that's just never going to happen. In fact, I think I'll put that to the test in my next video. Let's get on with it, shall we? Let's load optimized defaults to start with. Yes, enter. Straight into Intelligent Tweaker. Okay, we'll just enable host clock control. Whack that straight to 460. Just pause it there for a second because I want to talk about front side bus dead spots. And this particular motherboard has a uh, fairly decent dead spot in the front side bus. When it's set to four, anything above 445 megahertz, it just refuses to boot. Um, all the way through to 455 megahertz on the front side bus so any anywhere in between 445 and 455 it won't boot at all uh, but if we crank that straight to say 460 for example it will boot and run normally yeah i've seen this with many motherboards over the years it's it's just like a hole like a like a black hole dead spot on the motherboard or, or the processor that just doesn't like that that specific um, frequency moving on um, don't worry about performance enhance multiplier 2.4 the lowest for the memory we'll do a manual DRAM because I know this RAM runs at 7720 all out 1600 megahertz LLC enabled and vCore 1.475 that should do us for now 1.6 on the DRAM as well and that'll do for um, intelligent tweaker go back out and tidy up the rest of the, the BIOS disable the floppy drive we'll get there SSD to boot, AHCI, and we'll save and exit. Boom, boot it up camera's got a little bit of trouble focusing on that
and here we are in Windows. The usual real temp. Temps look pretty good for the speeds. I mean, we're at 4.6 gigahertz. And we, well, we've got the D14 on this on this at the moment, so temps temps are actually pretty good. Open up hardware monitor. Have a look at our minimum and maximum values. Don't mind the dodgy camera work here, guys. It's all good. Try and get a zoom in of those speeds and voltages. Maximum 4600 megahertz. Looking pretty good to me. Open up CPU Z. Have a look at our V core. 1.45. So we set that to 1.75 in the BIOS, so it looks like it's still got a little bit of V-droop, even though load like calibra calibration is enabled. So that's good. Crack open Prime 95, let that run for 10 minutes or so. And we should be good to start our gaming session. Temps look good. 100% load on Prime. That should, that should even out around 70, 75 degrees in about 10 minutes. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Next video is going to be uh, how fast can we get uh, DDE, DDR3 running. In particular, my nice little Corsair Dominator GT kit, 1866 megahertz. Now, I know this kit can actually do 2200 megahertz, so it should be a good video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.